So now we're moving into looking at half equations and their potential and then putting those half equations together to make a whole equation and looking at the whole equation of potential. And remember what we're looking for here is that a positive potential means that the process is spontaneous or feasible to use that word and a negative potential means that it's non-spontaneous or non-feasible. So if we look here, some standard electro potentials given below. So the system, notice that these are all half equations. You have something reacting with an electron or gaining an electron, so a reduction to give you a product, but there's nothing to produce that electron. There's no corresponding oxidation going on here. So it is only a half equation that describes the, in this case, the reduction. And all of these, note, have got positive reduction potentials. In other words, all of these species here, iodine, Fe3+, bromine, and chlorine, would all like to be reduced. They all have that positive potential. So using the information in this table, state which of the halides will reduce Fe3+, to Fe2+. So the reduction half equation we're interested in is right there. Fe3+, being reduced to Fe2+. And of course, we have to give a reason for our answer. Now, if we're interested in Fe3 plus being reduced, that means that something else must be oxidized. And we're told that it's going to be a halide that is oxidized. In other words, we're looking at this general reaction here. There's the Fe3 plus going to Fe2 plus. And we're told that a halide, so that's an X minus, must be oxidized. And what you get when you oxidize a halide, you get a halogen. Now, something that I really do emphasize is not to rely just on the tables and the values for reduction half equations, because every reduction half equation also has inherent in it information about a corresponding oxidation half equation, which is the reverse process. So what you see here is we've got halogens, I2, Br2, and Cl2 being reduced to halides, I minus, Br minus, and Cl minus. Well, let us explicitly also write the oxidation of halides going to halogens. So I minus going to iodine, bromide going to bromine, chloride going to chlorine, because of course, this is the oxidation that we're going to be interested in. Now, I also like to explicitly write out the oxidation potentials, okay, which are, of course, the opposite of the corresponding reduction. Now, it's really important to notice that we're reducing, say here, iodine to iodide. So that's telling us about oxidizing iodide back to iodine. Okay, notice electrons on the left for the reduction ones, which of course I put in red, and electrons on the right for the oxidations, which I write in blue. Now, how do we get those potentials? Well, when we flip the equation from a reduction to an oxidation, we change the sign of the potential. In other words, if it's positive going this way, it's negative going back that way. So our oxidation potentials for the halides minus 0.54, minus 1.09, minus 1.36. And what that's telling us immediately is that halides don't really want to be oxidized back to the halogens. And of course, that's something you've known since you first started talking about ions. Non-metals want to lose electrons, excuse me, want to gain electrons to become anions. So once those anions are formed, they don't really want to lose those electrons to go back to being the halogens. Anyway, now what we can do is we can put our reduction half equation and potential right there together with the halide oxidations and the oxidation potentials to give us the overall potential for the whole reaction or the cell potential for the reaction. And what we want to know is which one of these halides will do this reduction, which ones will end up with a positive potential. So in other words, the oxidation potentials, which are all negative, cannot be more negative than negative 0.77, because as soon as they become more negative than 0.77, suddenly the potential for this whole thing becomes negative. So we see that bromide and chloride are more negative than 0.77. So if I put bromide in here, for example, it would be minus 1.09 plus 0.77, which would be a negative number. OK, so therefore those would be non-spontaneous. On the other hand, though, if we look at the iodide, we have the potential for the reduction 
plus 0.77. And then we have the oxidation potential minus 0.54. Now, I really want to emphasize that this is how I do this. I don't do reduction minus oxidation just using these numbers because that's conceptual nonsense. We've got the reduction one that we look here. We have the oxidation one that we take here. And then we just add the reduction and the oxidation much much better conceptually because this minus 0.54 does indeed correspond to the i minus going to a half i2 so anyway a little bit different from how i do it compared to how your teachers probably do it if your teachers do it this way great if they don't this is how i'm going to do it we have our reduction potentials we have our oxidation potentials the cell potential in this case plus 0.23 is just the combination of those so iodide minus 0.54 Fe3 plus to Fe2 plus plus 0.77, put them together overall plus 0.23, which is a spontaneous reaction. Thus, only iodide can reduce Fe3 plus to Fe2 plus. Future questions I will not go into as much detail, but I wanted to emphasize how I do this thought process. So same table here except without the iron, because all we're interested in here are halogens and halides. Bromine reacts with aqueous potassium iodide. However, bromine does not react with aqueous sodium chloride. Use the standard electrode potentials below to explain these observations. So what we're looking at here is a halide redox. We start off with, for example, bromine. There's bromine reacting with iodide. That would be the iodide giving us bromide and iodine. We're saying that does work. But the other one, bromine, so again, Br2 plus X minus here, this would be chloride, going to bromide plus chlorine doesn't work. And obviously, we have reduction. So let's highlight those reduction half equations and potentials. But then we also have an oxidation to accompany that reduction. And let's explicitly, again, list out those oxidation reactions and the oxidation potentials. So let's look at the reactions it wants to talk about bromine plus iodide so that's bromine plus iodide goes to bromide plus iodine again the reduction one in the red and so for bromine that's going to be plus 1.09 and the oxidations are in blue and explicitly iodide goes to iodine is minus 0.54 so we put that together and so bromine plus iodide gives us plus 0.55 volts that's a spontaneous reaction the other one, bromine does not react with chloride. Well, let's see what reaction that would be. That's the bromine plus the chloride. Chloride going to be oxidized to chlorine. Bromine going to be reduced to bromide. Let's put those in. Again, the reduction one is plus 1.09. But now the oxidation, chloride goes to chlorine, minus 1.36. So that's minus 0.27 volts or non-spontaneous. So that agrees with what we're told, the spontaneous one with a positive self-potential, the non-spontaneous with a negative self-potential, because chlorine is happier to be reduced than bromine is, even though they're both happy, which means that chloride is less happy to be, or more unhappy, I should say, to be oxidized than bromide is. So another one now dealing with metals, we're told we got copper and copper two plus. So that's associated with that reduction half equation and that potential. And then we have iron and Fe two plus that's associated with this half equation and that reduction potential. OK, now again to emphasize those are reduction potentials, put them in red because reduction starts with red. But uh, more appropriately, you can tell that they're reduction potentials because the electrons on the half equation are on the left hand side. Let us explicitly write out the oxidation information we get from this. So each of these reduction half equations, I flip to turn them into oxidation half equations. So that's the electrons are on the right now because oxidation is where something is losing or producing electrons and of course when I flip the equation from a reduction half equation to an oxidation half equation I also have to change the signs of the potential because for example if copper 2 plus being reduced to copper is a positive potential it's spontaneous then copper being oxidized to copper 2 plus will be non-spontaneous 
Now let's actually see what we've got here. Calculate the standard EMF, the standard voltage for the above cell. So in other words, we've got copper, copper two plus and iron and iron two plus. And what we want to know is which arrangement of these half equations will give us a positive voltage. Now, this one, I'm just going to try both, but then we'll point out the fundamental concept that we will apply from then on. OK, now the two possibilities we got, we can reduce the copper two plus and oxidize Fe. So that's going to be using this reduction and this oxidation. And when we do that, we get plus 0.34 for the reduction, plus 0.44 for the oxidation or plus 0.78 volts. If on the other hand, we did the other way around, so we're reducing the Fe2 plus to iron, but we oxidized the copper to Cu2 plus. Now we'll be looking at those two half equations. OK, and these are the only possibilities, right? You've got to have a reduction and an oxidation. So we're either reducing the copper or oxidizing the copper, oxidizing the iron or reducing the iron. Now, if we look at this one here, reduce Fe2 plus and oxidize copper. Now that's minus 0.44 for the reduction, minus 0.34 for the oxidation or minus 0.78 volts. So the one we're going to want is where we reduce copper two plus and oxidize iron. Now, the quick and dirty way to figure that out normally is you look at your reduction half equations and more importantly, the reduction potentials. And you're going to want to flip one of those to turn it into an oxidation. And if you flip the one that's more negative, then that will turn into the one that's more positive. So I could have looked at this and immediately said we're looking at the copper plus 0.34 and the iron minus 0.44. Well, if I flip the iron, so that becomes plus 0.44. Now the whole thing will be positive. So remember that generally you flip the one that is the more negative. Another way to say that is you flip the one that is the less positive. Now, the second part of this question state whether or not you'd expect nickel to react with iron to ions and give a reason for your answer. OK, well, here's nickel and there's the iron two plus ions. So we're reducing the Fe two plus and we're oxidizing the nickel. So there are the two half equations we're looking at. Iron two plus being reduced to iron is minus 0.44. Nickel being oxidized to nickel two plus is plus 0.25. Put them together, though, and it's minus 0.19 volts, which is, of course, negative, so non spontaneous. So therefore, I would not expect them to react.